Okay, let's have a quick review on what we've talked about last time. And, uh, and then after that, we're going to talk about more, um, talk more about pointers. We're going to go through string header file, kind of review that one and see what it is. Arrays and pointers, how do they deal with each other? And uh, uh, close up, hopefully, by going through uh, uh, files and everything. So we talked about uh, a computer um, memory being a, a single uh, array of characters. And we said the index of the characters in the uh, index of the um, array is essentially the address of the, of the memory that we have. And we said whenever we create a, um, a variable someplace in memory, the variable will be placed, and that will sit, start in a specific address of that character array. So if you have an integer, four of those are going to be set. Therefore, it's going to be address 108 in this example. <clears throat> and if you create another variable, it's going to sit somewhere else based on where compiler fights, compiler and operating system, essentially the platform finds it fit. <clears throat> and when you put a value inside the variable, it actually sits inside the variable covering all the, um, <clears throat> the values because those four bytes that are actually occupying the, 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 um, the space for the integer all represents the number and the same thing with the double value or whatever you have. And um, we said that uh, because we want to be able to access all these values remotely from different functions and not to be limited only with the scope of a function, we need to be able to know where they are and handle their, uh, mm, their addresses in memory. And that because of that, we went through a fake type of a design and said, uh, I, I wish, we wish we had a variable type called pointer. Uh, we could actually create uh, that variable, and within that variable, I could hold addresses, and using that point to the places that I want to go to memory. Then we said the addresses that are going, we are putting in there, if they are pointing to someplace just random, it's not of no use. We need to be able to point specifically to pieces of uh, uh, to things that we have in memory place so we can deal with it remotely. It's as simple as that. A pointer literally points to someplace else in memory where you can go and work with that. We should never forget that pointers by themselves are variables. They are nothing extraordinary. They are just variables capable of holding an, uh, an integer number that cannot be negative, essentially the index of where the stuff are in memory. Then we said, we can actually make the, uh, the pointer point to an address of a variable, asking the compiler to extract the address of the variable and give it to us. And now if we say target of that pointer is set to something, in that case, when, when we say target of, uh, of a pointer is set to something, then that means the <coughs> injector is gone. Come back, yeah. So target of pointer set to something. That means essentially I don't want to deal with the variable PTR, but where the variable PTR is referring to. And then, uh, the therefore, I can remotely change the values of a variable. And uh, we said that uh, through that, I can show the variable using itself in its own scope. I can remotely show the uh, content of the variable by going to the target of the pointer. And if I show the pointer itself, it shows exactly where the variable is in memory. And then we said this design is flawed because if I actually use the same pointer to point to another variable, there is no way for the compiler to know where the tar target is sitting. And because of that, we need to change our design and actually tell to the compiler what type of an address this pointer is supposed to hold. And the example was if I want to actually put a variable using the address of the double variable that I have, the compiler has no way to know how many bytes it's sitting at the target. It's as if you're looking at an address on an envelope, and you don't know if what you're going to is, in a, is a single small little townhouse or is a huge government building. The address is the address. It has a number. It has a, a, a postal code and everything. It's identical to all of them. Because of that fact and the fact that this is not possible, we said we have to change our design, tell to the compiler what type of thing we are dealing with. We can, uh, therefore, we, we, we said that um, uh, when we say integer pointer PTR, now the compiler knows what's sitting at the target and therefore can actually set uh, the address of the specific thing to that one. 
and now it knows what is sitting at a target. And when I create a double pointer, again, setting the value of that double pointer will do the same thing over here. And therefore, everything becomes possible. And um, well, after doing that, I showed you the example for it. Uh, putting something like, uh, and I called it fake pointers, if you, uh, if you recall fake pointers, we said, uh, we, I literally wrote the thing using the thing we had in the, present in the presentation in pointer PTR, and it magically worked. And we found out uh, that I used the find statements to kind of fake my way through. So I'm saying address of is uh, uh, asterisk, sorry, target of is asterisk, address of is ampersand and pointer, is an asterisk. And to kind of identify what is what in here, we said that, uh, we said that pointers, and, and see there, it is presented with asterisk, and so any place you write pointer, instead you write asterisk. But it's crucial that you name it properly. Never ever say in integer star PTR, never say integer asterisk PTR, really say what it means and the concept sits in your brain. So integer pointer PTR, double pointer PTR, and we had the exact same thing for the, uh, the ampersand. And we said ampersand, don't say ampersand, A say address of A. So therefore, all the places that I say address of, I put ampersand instead, and that ampersand belongs, it's a unary uh, operator extracting the address of whatever is sitting in front of it, and hopefully at left side you have a pointer that matches the type of the, that address. So I have a double pointer DPTR. DPTR is holding the address of the pointer. And uh, that's how it works out. And we said, unfortunately, in C, target obviously represented by uh, an asterisk too, but this asterisk is a unary operator. It doesn't come after a type. And therefore, at any moment that you say target of, you can put a tar uh, asterisk inset, and that acts like uh, a unary operator. So it's essentially saying, instead of DPTR, I want to put this in the target of DPTR. So the asterisks who come before variables, you don't say asterisk, you say target of. Therefore, everything makes sense. And then it's going to work out just fine. And then uh, mentioned that if Asterisk comes after a type, it means a type pointer and it belongs to the type. And like anything, you can get a, create a pointer of any type, custom type like a structure or a regular thing. And after that, we said if it comes uh, in front of a variable as a unary operator, it means target of, we, and we gave many examples for that. And that was it. So, uh, Showing the real example, we showed that we, it works the exact same way when you put the asterisk over this, so I don't have to have to have that silly pointers that H over there. And uh, um, then uh, we finalized our session by saying that using pointers, now I can remotely access stuff. If I pass a variable, in, uh, if I create an argument of type of a pointer, and pass the address into a function, then the address will essentially uh, be initializing the pointer that I have as an argument. So now my uh, function is capable of uh, modifying, I'm not gonna say return, because that's a, a very incorrect terminology to use. A function is only capable of returning one value and one value only, not more. It's impossible to be more than that. And all functions always receive something by value. So it's a lie when they tell you this function is receiving something by address. No, it's not. You are passing the Everything is passed by value. But the value you are passing is an address. Therefore, you can do stuff with it. Always remember that, OK? So if I say integer pointer SPTR and double pointer DPTR over there, I can literally pass the uh, address of student number in this case, an address of mark by value to uh, get student mark. And because SPTR and DPTR are pointers now, instead of dealing with them, I can deal with their targets. And the targets are actually sitting outside of the function, therefore I can do anything outside of a function. So it's literally passing remote control to functions to do things outside, okay? And that was the end of the session the other day. So. This brings us to a very important uh, 
point at a very important thing uh, right now. So let's go back to what we had a couple of uh, sessions ago when we created, I think, an item. And the item that we had was a structure. Remember that? Which reads and writes and all the good stuff that we have. I'm going to bring that uh, structure back over here. So let me actually bring that item back over here and kind of see what pointers can do with structures that makes our programs more efficient. So I'm going to say, I'm going to do over here, add existing item, add uh, existing item. And I'm going to go back to what we had with those items. So I'm going to bring the item.h and item.c, copy them. Uh, let me bring the util utilities I have. Copy them over here, copy. And I'm going to come back over here, paste it over here, and add them to my uh, current program. So this one becomes, I'm going to say, um, uh, C D in here. Uh, let's, let's put these things away completely, because these are reviews, and you have, we have talked about it. It's a, it's a, it these are essentially copies from uh, what we had uh, uh, in a previous uh, day. So you have them all over there. I'm not going to bring them in. In here, I'm going to say A functions and pointers. OK, and close everything up. So now coming back to uh, our item, we have a structured item over here with plus price, SKU, quantity, and some kind of a thing in it, some name for the, for the item in it. And we created print items, read items, uh, uh, p print items, read items, print a single item, and r read an item, and we turn, return the item by value. Let's focus on the two functions that we have over here. The print item we created, and we have done a workshop on this, so we know exactly what's going on with the student thingy, right? So it's the same thing over there. Now, take a look at uh, uh, the functions that we have written. I'm, I'm focusing on print items and, uh, on, and, uh, and read item. I'm going to bring the main from that one, too, and kind of do a quick look on what everything is, and then we are going to... Uh, uh, Kinda. So this is oh, that's not the main main. I don't know where I put it. I'm gonna write another one for it. It's not important. Okay, so uh, let's come to main in here. So I'll remove this. I don't need it. In here, I'm going to include my, uh, what should I call it, the item, uh, item.h to be able to uh, making, to be, to be able to make the, uh, the uh, structure available and all the functions that I have in, uh, in the item. So, and I'm going to create a, a, a structure for students, so struct uh, item, sorry, item. Um, uh, let's call it i, and I'm going to initialize it to uh, values that it has. So just to uh, uh, be easy. So it's price, SKU, quantity, and name. So price, price, SKU, quantity, and name, butter, whatever. Okay, so this is my item. Okay, and using the functions that I have, I can actually print this item, right? So I can simply say over here, print item, a, a PR and item, I think it was, yeah, PR and item, and I can pass I to this one. Okay, and ro running this program, I know that it's going to extract the values out of the the structure. We've already dealt about it. It shows it in a linear way for me, right? Are we okay with this? Problems? Okay, this is what we did before. Now I want to tell you why this is inefficient and how pointers can make it efficient. Okay? Let's go back to see how functions are called. We talked about this in day two of our, like it was like 
ages ago, two months ago. So I'm just going to give you a, a kind of a refreshing thing to do. So um, kind of reboot it. So we said that whenever you have a function, and our function in our case is the item thingy that we have. Where is the item that I'm going to split the window so we can actually see the function? So at left side, I have item.c. So this is print item, the function, right? And this is where I called it. And we said whenever a function is called, this happens. It's essentially the function you have over here. The function is called like this. And the argument of the function will be set to whatever that is being passed to it. This is how the function is called. So when I say print item i, I'm essentially saying call, initiate the, the, the function print item, initializing a to i. Is that clear for everyone? Is that clear? <laughs> Is that clear for everyone? OK. So when I do something like this, what does this line mean by itself? Just in the parentheses. If I say over here, now I'm going to, just to elaborate, what does that mean? I'm going to come over here. If I say over here, integer x is equal to 10. What does line 31 mean? Can anybody tell me? What does it do? I know it's obvious, but I want that obvious thing to be said. It creates a variable called x and stores 10 in it, correct? Are we OK with this? Now, if I say over here, integer y sets to x, what happens at line 32? Anyone else? What happens at 32? Creating an, another integer called y, setting it to x. Look at this. Creating a new item a and setting it to i. Correct? Do we understand this? That's why every time the function is called, the arguments are fresh. They get created, and they are initialized by the arguments that are values that are passed to the arguments. Every single time you call the function 50 times, 50 times the structure will get created, a brand new one, and it will be initialized to another value. OK? You already saw the process of variable creation. Memory gets allocated to it. Things are getting copied into it, right? For an integer, how many bytes it was? Four. For a structure, how many bytes it's going to be? Eight. Four, four, 16 plus 31. Do the math a lot. Right? So every time you are calling the function, that many things first has to get, have to get occupied in the memory. Then all the information from another one should get copied into it. That's lots of work. Didn't we just learn pointers? Didn't we just say that pointer size doesn't make any difference based on what is the target? I can have a structure with 5,000 things in it. It's still four bytes to point to it, right? So it is always, always, always more efficient to pass a structure by its address and deal with it instead of creating a ginormous thing and copy everything. What I can do in my code over here is to say, hey, I'll, uh, instead of printing the item using the value like this, I'm going to receive the address for it. Let's call it IPTR, right? So when I create a structure item, what is the size of the pointer? Four bytes, right? The only catch is that when I actually want to, let me bring this to the right. Uh, the only catch is that when I want to print the item, I cannot pass the item itself. I have to pass its address, correct? Therefore, structure item pointer, let me bring it down. 
IPTR will be set to address of I. Still, a new thing will get created, which is a pointer. Still, it will be initialized by a value that is the address of the structure coming. But it's much smaller. It's just four bytes. Or if you have a 64-bit computer, it's eight bytes. It's very small. OK? So the results are all the same, no difference. All I need to do is to go to my print item and change the code so instead of printing using uh, using the name, I use target of IPTR instead, correct? Which becomes essentially the structure that is outside. But there is a problem over here. I can't, so the problem is that this dot over here is much stronger than the asterisk. So that's going to happen first. To, to, to make sure that com compiler understands what it is, I have to pull the whole thing in parentheses. Uh, it's like how multiplication happens. Okay. So in here, all I'm saying, I'm saying target of IPTR name, and I change everything like that. Don't worry, I'm going to make it easier. First, I'm going to write it with a uh, complicated, not a complicated thing, with the knowledge that we have. Then I'm going to tell you how C made it easier so you can. So now we have done this, right? So if I run the program, it will still work the same way. Why? So take a look. So I'll run the program. I get an error. Let's see what is the error over here. Cannot uh, convert from. Uh, Oh, 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 let's, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, comment this one because the other one, I have to put over here address of, because the other one, uh, the other function was using my print item by value. See, every single row, so all I needed to do is instead of printing the structure item, print, pass its address. And so that's the update that I have done, and that was the reason for it. So when I run the program, it comes over here. So instead of I, the address is going to go there. So it comes right over here. And now IPTR is the address of the structure. But it's still, it has access to all the stuff remotely. So it's like looking at it with the binoculars, right? It's the exact same thing. And then when it's printed, the outcome is exactly the same. OK? And when I look at the output, I'll see that it's actually printed perfectly. OK? But much more efficient. OK? Much, much more efficient. So somebody who writes a program like that, passing values, and somebody who writes it with a pointer, your program runs tens of times faster than the other program when the function is being reused. Now, this is just printing a very simple structure for a student. Imagine you're writing a game. And the function that you are doing is actually drawing the, 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 the characters on the screen dynamically as it's running around. Each character that is printed over there is printed using polygons that are shaping the thing together, the, the wireframe that it has. And each one of those things is printed with a function. And each one of them is some kind of a structure holding coordinates on the memory. Imagine billions of times the function has to get called for your character to do this. Now, if that's by value, your character is going to shaky and go like that. If you pass it by address, it zooms away. You understand the difference? OK. That's why we always try to carry, like, uh, if, which one is easier? If, to bring Seneca College to a student or bring the student to Seneca College? You, you follow what I'm saying? If I tell you that's the address of Seneca College, go over there and study, fine. But for every single student, I build a Seneca College separately? That can't be done. Impossible. That's what it is. I know it's funny when I'm telling it, but that's literally what it means when you pass things by value. Are we OK down to this point? One thing first, syntax. Because this was very. Like, I have to go one, two, three, parentheses, yada, 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 so many things to type. 
uh, and you know, C programmers like to write stuff very short and, and you know, short and sweet and stuff. So they said, if you are dealing with a structure pointer, you don't need to go through everything. It's a pointer, right? Use an arrow to point it. So instead of actually saying target of IPTR, yada, 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 I can actually just put an arrow here. It means that, why is it going to new line? Oh, because of the, I can just do like that. So instead of target of IP, so it's essentially, it means, it means target of IPTR, IPTR can be written as IPTR that points to. So you're essentially to say, because this is not a regular thing, it's a pointer, it says it points to that one, it points to this one, right? It points to its members. So instead of writing that IPTR, I can actually write this. You can, if you're not comfortable with it and it, it makes more sense to use target of, you can do that or you can use the arrow notation. They are identical, absolutely no difference. So I do it like this and, and it works perfectly, absolutely no difference. Oh, why am I putting dot in here? There's no dot needed anymore. So it's, it's, it's much faster and quicker to write, and the outcome is identical, no difference. Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. If we are in a library and we are reading, borrowing books from the library to read, I'll give you the address of the book. I'm going to say it's at this shelf, at that shelf, go pick up the book and read it, right? Are we allowed to write stuff in that book? No, we are getting it to read it, correct? So you, when you are passing address of something to a function, you have to always make sure that function is not a nasty person writing stuff and highlighting stuff in a book. I have to make this function, instruct this function only to read from that address, read only. How do we make things read only? Allowed? Const. Const. So all I need to do in here, instead of writing that, I'm just going to write const. As you see, it works. And that's the thing that drives professors nuts. When I tell you, oh, you lose mark over there because it's not const, you say, but it works. I know it works. It works for you to leave the door open and go out and come back three weeks later. But sometimes your house has got to be cleaned up when you're back. Right? So it's better to lock it, make it read only. That's what it is. So it, it, but it works is never a good answer. You have to make sure that it works safely. So in here, I'm going to say const, and I'm going to make the prototype const. It doesn't make any difference for the, for the, for the function. Okay? Because function is only reading it. And the good thing is that if by mistake over here, I do some crazy thing like IPTR is, I, IPDR that points to price is set to 24. Now it's going to tell me what the heck you're doing in here. This thing is constant. Expression must be a modifiable value. You can't do that. So it's kind of reminding yourself not to shoot yourself in the foot. Okay, that's what it is. So that's that. Now, read item. What does read item do? Read item is reading a local variable. So what's happening in here? Take a look at it. Read item, it create to read a structure and return it. What do you do? You have to create a temporary one, do all the stuff that you have, and return it. Okay? You, you don't know, but you are not only creating one extra thing and set it and return it, but behind the scene, when you are returning it, another one is going to get created. You know why? Because, think about it, if the function returns the to read out, after the function is done, the scope is over, correct? That to read goes to garbage. So how can you access it outside? You can't, right? So behind the scene, without you knowing, it's as if I want to give my friend a cup of coffee. 
but there is a force field. I cannot pass that coffee over here to, to him, right? And he, can, he has his coffee, but he cannot get mine. So what we do, we get a, a, a third cup that can pass through. I empty the coffee in here. I throw mine out, and I give that one to him. So now he has a cup of coffee. He empties it in his own cup and throw that one away. So not only I'm throwing one out, the other one that is temporarily used to pass the coffee from here, that has to be thrown out too. So returning something like this is actually using two structures. Wow, even worse than that. So we shouldn't do this. We just learned that we can change things remotely, right? So why, why return anything? When like scanf, I can just get its address and change what's outside. So nothing new is created. I'm just putting the information in the location they provided for me. It's as I'm telling you, please put this coffee on that table. No new mug is needed. He doesn't need to have anything. I'm giving him a cup. It is coffee. You get my cup. You give it to him. He doesn't need to have an, an extra one. I don't need to create another one. It's only one cup of coffee going around. And then we can wash it and reuse it, right? And recycle and that's movement of things around. So how do we do that? So in read item, instead of returning something, I'm not going to return anything. Instead, I'm going to say, I'm going to pass a struct item pointer IPTR. So I'm just passing a pointer to it. I am passing the address of what I want to read things into. Obviously, this is not going to be constant because the intention of read item is to put something in there. Therefore, therefore, uh, in here, let me just copy that over here. So I'm going to co copy that over here and put it over here. So no returning required. This is void. No returning required over here, and no to read is needed over here at all. Okay, all I need, and I don't need that X and Y explanation that I had for the for the previous thing. So what happens over here is this: I'm going to just copy this IPTR, and any place that I have to read, I'm going to put IPTR and use the arrow. Copy. So this to read. We'll change to that. This to read. We'll change to that. This to read. We'll change to that. So as you see, I didn't change any code of, of any kind. The only thing that I did over here, I said, hey, I have the, I have where the, where my item is. Now we let, let me put stuff in it remotely. Obviously, if I, if I, uh, I don't even know. Let me, let me see if I have anything that is relate. Um, yeah, read items I think I had. Read items is not going to work. Let me go to read items. So read. So as you see, read items is receiving this, right? It's re returning it. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to take this array over here and put it inside read items and pass its address. So now I'm saying pass the address of the structure in it. Therefore. The read item will receive the address of every individual structure and put this stuff in it. And everything's going to work perfectly with absolutely no problem. So I can actually do this now. I can actually say uh, read item uh, into address of i. So when you say it properly, you remember it. Read item into address of i. And when I run the program, and then print it again. Let's put this one up here. And this one says print item at address of i. OK? So you, you see how I say these things? You follow how I say these things? You say them, and you know exactly what's going on. Read from address of i, read into address of i, 
print uh, item at address of i, something like that, OK? So when I run the program, I'm gonna just going to come down right to here and run the program and get to it. So it gets to the program, and now it's actually the first one is printed. Now read item one to be called. The address of i will be passed by value to read item. So IPTR will hold the address of i, which in this case is 1299, 1, 2, 3, 10, and butter, right? And now it's going to say, get line the name. So the name is going to be water now. And let's close everything. Water now, and then. It goes to next one, so prints S is enter SKU, gets an integer. Uh, so I'm going to say over here, the SKU is, I don't know, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, ask for the price. Again, it puts into the price of where IPTR is pointing to, and that's uh, got to be the double value, so let's say 199, and it gets the quantity of it, how many we want to how many we want to get, and I'm going to say 12 of them, and then it ends the entry and comes back. And when we come back over here, we'll see that now i is changed to all those values. So the target of the structure is done. So from now on, anything you do with this structure, please pass it by address. Never pass it by value. That's too expensive. What is expensive in computer programming? Memory and speed, OK? All right, so now we print it, and life is beautiful, and everything's done, okay? So that's essentially what it is with every single, uh, with every single uh, function that you have. The, one of the tricks to learn C language or any programming language is that Learn the definition and apply it to everything. Never guess. When I say an, a, a function always receives many things by value and returns only one thing, that's what it is. It doesn't matter what. The things it receives could be addresses, could be values. The, th the thing it returns could be an address, could be a, a, a structure, could be a single thing. Okay. There are complications over here, though, by returning and stuff. But well, I'm not going to go into it. So let's learn what we have right now. And your workshop that comes for this is going to only practice this, OK? What are the implications of using address? Is that if, you, if somebody gives you the address of a place and the address is wrong, you'll be lost, right? That lost, usually in computers, in, especially on matrix, comes as segmentation fault. When you see that segmentation fault, usually it means you had an address of somewhere that was wrong. So, uh, and if you ever see the, ad, the, the, the message says null pointer assignment, you know what does it mean? They give you a piece of paper and say, this is an address, go and get me milk. And you look at it, the paper is empty. If there is no address, that's null pointer assignment. If the address is wrong and say, go get me milk, and you go end up in a, I don't know, broom closet, <laughs> then you've got to get segmentation fault. You send me to the wrong location, OK? That's what it is. These are the things that you get. So, uh, but you're not going to face it with the things we are doing now. When we're going to go to OP244, we're going to go into these address usage and stuff more deeply and more uh, in detail. Questions? Yes. That's a very good question. It depends. Remember I told you C is a middle level language, which essentially means um, you can do crazy stuff with it. It depends on the com compiler. If you use an old compiler, it's not going to give you a warning. All you're going to see is garbage. It's like you have a bottle of orange juice and you put coffee in it. 
You close your eyes, it's not a bad thing, but when you drink it, you think it's orange juice and suddenly it's coffee. You go, look, right? That's what happens. Or you go to pick sugar, but it's salt. You add sugar to your tea. Instead of sugar, you add salt. Nothing, it's just wrong data in a wrong place, right? Uh, as programming languages are, are improving and newer versions are coming out, they are making it more what we call type safe. A type safe language is a language that prevents just that. So just not even before compile, not even at compile time, it's going to warn you if it's forgiving and it's going to prevent you if it's a strict compiler telling you, hey, this is a double while you are reading it as an integer. Right? Does, does that make sense? All right. Okay, but uh, you will see. Um, um, C language used to be very open. It's like you have a, uh, a country with guns with no laws. <laughs> so people could do good do things, go hunting, and everybody be fed or murder somebody. That's the, that was the thing. Now they are making it stricter. So they are giving you a powerful language, and they are putting rules to use the language properly so you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Okay? Bad analogy, but hey, I have to, yeah. Uh, they always say, with power comes responsibility. That's what it is. So, so the, the language is very powerful, but you have to be responsible using it. So now we know structures. Now we know uh, how structures are passed by pointer. And one thing I want you to remember, it is so simple, it's unbelievable, and becomes difficult because it's unbelievable. The concept of a pointer is so simple that if you don't give it extra credit every single time, you're going to use it properly. But if your knees shake when you are doing writing a pointer because you heard from everybody pointers are evil, then pointers are nothing. They're just variables. If you know how to use an integer, you can use an integer pointer. In an integer, you, you, you put a number of oranges. In a pointer, you put where that number is. That's it. it, doesn't, it it's nothing special. Just understand its meaning and using it, use it accordingly, and it's easy. Okay. Um, next thing that we like to talk about is now that we know pointers, it's a good idea to kind of understand how arrays are implemented in C. So now. I am taking, opening up the, uh, the hood of the car, and I'm showing you the engine to see what's happening inside. And therefore, I'm giving you more power to be able to use things better and in, in a more efficient way. It's just, this is something that I really just want you to know. So when you create a variable, it goes somewhere in memory. We talked about it, right? And we said it has an address, and you do something in there. When you create a pointer, again, you create a variable. The job of that pointer is to hold the address of something else, correct? Right? Now, when you do like this, you're actually creating an array with one element, literally. When you have a variable with a pointer to it, you are essentially creating an array of, of what? Just imagine if you had more variables at the back. So, <clears throat> so, and then you put target of something, and it puts the value in it, and it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it, right? When you are creating an array, integer AR5, what happens behind the scene and, and then you, suit, you set the index 3 of the array, it sets it like that, right? We all know that, right? They say it's AR, but what uh, we need to understand is when you say integer AR5, there are actually two things created. A pointer called AR gets created, that is a constant integer pointer. You cannot change it. It cannot point anywhere. That integer is always doomed to point to the beginning of the array. It's the exact same thing. So when you say integer A5, A by itself is an integer pointer. That instead of one integer, is pointing to 50 of them. It's as simple as that. So, so essentially, what it means 
if I say target of APTR is 2345, you are actually setting the first one. <laughs> and it does like that. And it literally works. Like if you actually write like this, it actually works. It sets the first one. And if you say AR2, it sets that one. OK? So if I say, so this is essentially setting the target of AR plus two integers. <laughs> you see that? It's the same thing. AR2, or from AR go two integers further, the target of, right? Target of that. It's the same thing. So but obviously, you use this, they're going to fire you the next day. Don't do it, because it's confusing. We just want to learn what's happening underneath so we can use it properly. We, we know what happens behind the scene when we are using it. So these two are identical, no difference. OK? That's all. That's all I wanted to tell you, is that an array is essentially, and that's why when you pass an array to a function, you can change the array in the function. Remember that? It's because you are just passing the pointer, not the values. So you are just passing where the array is, and therefore it's used, and everything is done. The class ends at 11.35, right? Well, the people are standing over there watching. I don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid that somebody's going to, like, waiting for me or something. Anyway, so that's that. So that's, that's just what I wanted to tell you. So if I have, so, so in here I'm going to say, the uh, structs and functions. Dot C, uh, and and just to sh to just demonstrate to you what I meant. Say so if I have integer uh, a, and I have over here three that is set to ten, uh, twenty, and thirty. So when I have these three things over here, if I say target of a is set to uh, 200, and I say printf percent d and a a zero. What I'm doing now is essentially printing 200. Correct? Right? Okay. And more, more over that. They, they, they are literally the same thing. So I can do crazy stuff. I can actually say int ptr is set int pointer ptr is set to a. You can do that. It's an integer pointer, right? And it's going to hold the va address that hold that is held in a, right? So now ptr and a are both pointing to that place. So I can now interchangeably. So as of this point. A and PTR are both arrays. No difference. Exactly the same. So in here, I can actually say for integer i, I can say for i set to 0, i less than 3, and i plus plus. I can, I can actually use pointer notation, uh, array notation for a pointer. So I can actually do this. Doesn't make any difference. They're all the same. Right? So just that's just for you to know. Not necessarily you need to use it, but just know it. Yes. It depends what you want to do. Like, for example, let's say you want to have an array and two do two different things. And and no, that doesn't even make sense. Um, There are many applications that I cannot give you an example for. Your answer is that for what we do, no, you don't need to. But as you become more professional in programming, there comes the time that you really want to do that. I'm not going to go through it now because our brain just absorbed lots of information. Now I can give you an example of it, but then I'm going to wipe out all the things that you learned before that. So uh, we don't want to do that. But Book an appointment, and I'm going to take you through it and blow your mind if you want. But this is going to be only your mind that I want to blow, not everyone's, right? So this is this is exact. This was FYI session, okay? For you to know what happens behind the scene, okay? C is such a language. 
it's so primitive in its design that you can use the same thing in five different ways because they are all done the same way. Primitive, I mean, you know what I mean, right? It's designed so nicely, so, so neatly. And that's why we have so many other languages based on it with syntax, you know, like your JavaScript and C Sharp and many other. Anyways, so, so that's that. Uh, I do I want to it's the time ten forty two um let's have say five 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 ten minutes break, please don't go for a vacation, okay <laughs> it's five ten minutes break, and then after that we are going to uh we are going to continue with uh, something uh, that I'm not really teaching anything in this what I'm going to do I'm just going to tell you how can you use, how can you do your input and output in many different targets okay so let's have it that way so we know input output we know how to do left justified right justified print something how many digits after the decimal point and things like that to format whatever we are doing we know scanf to read something from console we know printf to read something on the screen right but what you don't know is that the printf and scanf functions are not actually called printf and scanf okay so the printf and scanf are actually f printf and f scanf they are not printf and scanf. But where they are printing and writing is your standard output and, sta and where they are reading is standard input. So they write on standard output, your monitor, and read from standard input. So if I actually wrote a code and I said something like printf hello IPC144 NBB, if I do that, okay, and I print it, okay, what actually the compiler is doing is f printing it on standard output. Got it? You see any difference with what I did? In here, the only difference between a printf and fprintf is that in fprintf I say where to print. That's all. Did I teach anything new? No. Just instead of printf, write fprintf and write where to write. Or if I want to read something, I can say fprintf on standard output uh, what is the mark and I can say f scan f from standard input percent D and address of mark and I say f printf standard output you entered percent D, and I'm going to print the mark. So it's painful. That's why we do print them, because they're not the standard. That's long. They say, well, when, I, when you don't mention anything, when you just say scanf, OK, let's make that uh, from console. But when you do f, you can actually say from where. So if I run this program, it's it's just I'm gonna put over here. It's the same thing, no difference. Do we understand this? Okay. And obviously, so um, <sighs> I 
I want it to sink in. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> if you want to put water in this bottle, what do you do? And I, I want you to imagine that you, you are at the fountain over there and you want to put water in this bottle. And you want you to explain to me exactly what you do step by step. You are standing over there with your water of water, okay? A bottle of water, and you want to fill it with water. What do you do? You open it, you fill it with water, and then what do you do? Close it, okay? If you don't open it and try to fill it with water, what happens? Water goes everywhere. If you fill it in and don't close it, what's going to happen? Water goes everywhere, right? Okay. If you want to drink from it, what do you do? You open the bottle, you drink, you close the bottle, right? If you don't open it, what happens? No water, right? If you don't close it, what happens? Water goes everywhere, right? That's the rule. That's what you need to remember to work with these things. Now, standard out and standard in are standard input, output, entry. They are always open. Always. You don't need to close it. You don't need to open it. Nothing. Because if they are not open, then you can't see anything on the screen, right? So those, those uh, uh, input, output places are always open. What? So, in here I'm going to say C, S, T, D, out, and S, T, D, in, dot, C. Well, what I can do is this. And when you are going to the water fountain, what is your intention? What do you want to do with your bottle? You want to fill it in, right? When you want to drink it, what is your intention? Empty it. Now, oh, I have one. Why I want, I, I want to borrow someone's and I remember. <clears throat> so, if I want to open this cup to fill it in, how do I open it? <clears throat> right? So this type of open, correct? If I want to drink from it, how do I open it? It's not the same. So you open it differently for drinking and opening differently with filling it in. Some of them are the same, okay? But we have ones that are different. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> so let's say I want to, okay, let's just do it like this. So. Now, what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say, file, my file. I'm going to say, f open. What is the name of the file? Give me a name. I'm going to call it hello, actually, but because we are printing hello over there. I'm going to call it hello.txt. And I'm opening it for writing. I'm, I don't want to drink from it. <laughs> I want to write into it. Are we okay with that? And after I put the hello thingy, I'm going to say F close my file, the bottle thingy that you have. Now, all I need to do is to put my file here. When you run this program, nothing happens. Why? Because it's written in a file. Now, if I actually open it over here, you will see that there is hello.txt, and it says hello IPC14 for MBB in it. Did I teach you something new? No. You write in a file, text file, and we, all we are doing is text. You are writing in a text file exactly as you do on a screen. You want to left justify, right justify, go to new line, print in with this many numbers after the decimal point and all the things, fine. Now, if I want to, if I want to read from a file, so this is simple read, simple write, dot C in file.
And all these things are standard input output because it's standard input output. Anything that relates to standard input output is in there. Now, that hello.txt, we have hello in it, right? I'm going to take this and make it read now. That was right. Now it's read. Now in here, I'm going to say, what do I say? I'm going to, I'm going to create a string, obviously. There's no mark in here. I'm going to say character uh, C string. And that string of mine is, say, 100 characters. I put something in it, whatever. Then I'm going to say f scanf from my file as a string and put it in SDR. And then I'm going to say printf. I'm not going to say f printf in standard output anymore. It's just silly. OK? You don't, yeah. You aren't, you, we're OK, right? So in here, I'm going to say printf the first word in hello.txt. Hello.txt is, is, percent s, and I'll go to no line. And I'm going to print the string. Right? So this program is the equivalent of having just a scanf and somebody on the console prints, printing, uh, typing this. So all those things that I say enter to test your program, I can put it in a file. Right? So now take a look. You see that? So just imagine. Just think that scanf is just regular scanf. Okay? And you have this pro and forget about the file thingy that we have. If you have scanf percent s sdr and somebody types hello space ipc144 mbb and hits enter because there's a new line you see line number two there's a new line at the end it means enter is here what's going to happen only hello will be read and the rest will remain in the file only hello would have been read and the rest would have remained in the keyboard right <laughs> same thing the only difference is that you don't have to deal with the idiot user. You can simply tell to them what you want the format of the data to be. I want first to be this, then to be that. Separate it with a comma, put a tab over. Any format that you want, you ask the client, and you say, I want the data to be prepared that way. And you design your scanf to read exactly that format, and you put it in a loop, the whole file comes in. No user entry. And if anything goes wrong halfway through, you need to ask the user, ooh, you entered it bad, do it now, like print an error message. No, all you do, you stop and you say, file is corrupted at this record. You read 50 and it failed. You say, after 50 reads, the file is corrupted. Please fix it. Done. You just give it back to the client. Let them deal with it. It's not your fault. You told them what the format to be. They made the mistake. They have to fix it. So if I run this program now, I will get a, the first word in hello.txt is hello, right? It reads the first one. And if I do it again, I can simply say printf, and the next one is and I'm going to put str again. So first, it's going to read hello. Hello is read. Where it's standing right now. So when hello is read, it stands over here, correct? Now it's continuing to read. It's as if somebody's typing space and then lots of stuff after. We know that any standard percent skips leading spaces. We learned that. So it's going to skip everything exactly like the keyboard. So you don't need to think nothing new is being taught in here. I'm just telling you, instead of somebody typing, the data is prepared for you. It's, it's, it's set for you to read from. And you do it like that. And, and, it, so, and the next one. So the next one is going to be uh, 144 NBB. Right? Correct? So just to show you, it's identical to 
what I said, I'm going to modify this hello, okay? And I'm going to put over here, hello again. Hello, yet again. So I have three lines now, right? This is E simple read from file. Let's see. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, take a look. Close that one. We said to read up to entry, to read everything, including spaces. What do I do? And backslash n, right? Read up to backslash n. I can do the exact same thing. I can say over here, f scanf from my file, a string up to up to, but no, 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 no. Up to backslash n, okay? Right? Up to backslash n, and I'm going to put it in the SDR. Right? Correct? And then in here, I'm going to, I'm just going to print it. I'm going to say um, uh, printf SDR. And I'm going to put a star uh, uh, percent s actually. And I'm going to actually let's put a. I just want to show you what is exactly read. So I'm going to do it like this. So whatever that is read over there will be get will be get printed into a less than and greater. So we know exactly what it's read. Okay. Now in here I'm going to say SDR. Correct. Are we good? Now if I run the program, what's going to happen? It reads the first line. You see that exactly that. OK, so I'm reading one line now. Remember the get line thingy that we had? Ta da You can just read it from a file, all you need to do. And because this, you know what is my file? File is actually a structure in a standard input-output. And you are getting its, uh, its address. So they change it to a type. It's like a structure. You're going to learn later on how to do that so you don't have to write struct again. But anyways, so it's essentially a, a structure that receives all the good stuff. So, so and you close it, yeah. So that's that. But what happens if I do it again? Now there's bonus mark for this. Um, what's going to get printed in the second one? Think about it for a second. Let's sink in. Think as if you have written the code and somebody's entering those things. So it's your workshop, and I say these are the sample data that you need to enter in your workshop. That's how it is. So I have. Hello, IPC144 NBB, enter. Hello again, IPC144 NBB, enter. Hello yet again, IPC144, enter. This is what I'm doing. If I do that, what is the first thing picking up? Hello, IPC144 NBB. What is the next character in the file that is about to be read? No, please, please, please turn your intelligence to off. Be dumb as a doorknob and then walk through. What did I tell you? When you are debugging your code, you have to turn your intelligence to off. If you expect what's going to be next, you're going to make a mistake. What does this say? Can somebody repeat it? What does this say? It says, read up to backslash n. So read up to backslash n. When you read up to backslash n, what is left in the file? backslash n. So the second one is not going to pick up anything because it's backslash n. And you say read up to backslash n. If I run the program, so again, it's, it's exactly like they are entering it from the keyboard. Did it print it twice? Oh yeah, it, it printed it twice. <laughs> you know why it printed it twice? Because the first one, if I had an SDR1 and SDR2, it wouldn't. <laughs> Because it, it didn't put anything in it. Let me prove it to you. So in here, I'm going to set this one to empty, right? So that's that empty string, right? Now, what is the difference between a string and a, and a character array? Do you remember? 
You were supposed to do that in your reflection. What is the difference between a string character and... Only one. No, character array. Character array is many characters. Character string is many characters too. The difference is... Yeah, one person, one person. Uh huh. And zero. Zero. So a string is a series of that, and they put an all at the end, right? So if I put, if I make the first element of a, of a string zero, what happens? It becomes an empty string, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, print it, and then set str. Oh, it's way too big. And then set str zero to zero. So null, null terminate at the beginning, which means, which means this, this thing is now, which means this thing is now empty with respect. As a character array, it's not. After that zero, there are still lots of stuff. But because I'm following the standard of a string and I say the first one is the end, the beginning is the end, it becomes empty, right? So now if I run it, you will see that the second one, the second one actually didn't pick anything up. See? The second one didn't pick anything up. So how do I skip that new line? We flush the key, right? So instead of flush key, I'm going to create something called flush file, <laughs> right? So I'm going to say void flush file. But in here, I'm going to say I need to know which file, right? One by one, I'm going to get, so I'm going to say character ch uh, while, and I'm going to put something like zero in here. And I'm going to say while ch is not equal to backslash n, that's how we flushed, right? What? And then I'm going to say scanf, oh, f scanf, sorry, f scanf from fptr, the file pointer, uh, one character, and put it in, in ch, address of ch. That flushes it, right? Correct? You can do that exactly like, exactly like a keyboard. So now I can say read up to backslash n, and then after that I can say flush file. And I can put over here my file. Now if I do that, the second one will actually pick up the, the next one because it's flushed. It's the same thing, okay? So that's one way. Just showing you that everything is identical. I am not teaching anything new. It's just from which medium you're reading and into which, uh, into which medi medium you're printing. Okay? So, uh, yeah. Um, okay. This is good, so that's one thing. I'm going to say, uh, and now, now we can actually do something like this. Uh, I can say, I could read, oh, I, want, I want to write a loop and read everything off it and keep going to the end. You can do that, okay? How can you do that? You can simply, you can simply do some, what does scanf return, remember, in full proofing? The number of things it reads, right? The number of things it reads. So if, if scanf, I have 1% in the scanf, right? 1% sign. It means it's reading one thing. So it's going to return 1 when it's successful. And it, it cannot, it's going to be 0, right? So I can just do that. I can literally uh, read line by line and see if it's actually uh, returning a successful thing to me. So now in here, I'm going to say uh, while. f scan f is equal to 1, flush it, and print it. Oh, actually, let me just first save it. Uh, 
Let me just save what I had. Let me run it, make sure it's good. All right, that's fine. Uh, F8 now, I'm going to say over here, uh, no, not that, not the output. I'm going to say Alt F8. And now in here, I'm going to say uh, F uh, uh, read line, reading line, a line from file. Let's see. <coughs> So let's let's have this one again over here. So now I'm going to write that thing. So I'm going to say while f scan of yada 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 is equal to one. It means if it read something, flush it, print it, make it empty and keep doing that until you stop. So it reads the line. If it's one, good. It's going to go flush, print it, and set it so you can read the next one. OK? So now what's going to happen in here? So what am I doing? Yeah, that's that. Now if I have, if I run the program, it's going to read the three lines and print it up. It's going to keep going until it hits it. And nobody entered anything. I could have lines of entry over here, and they will be all red. OK? That's a beautiful thing, and nobody has to enter anything. OK? One last thing before we go. Save. So let's say I want to read coordinates, two integer numbers, from the thing. And I'm going to, and I'm going to tell to the client, I want it to be comma separated values. Have you heard that, comma separated values? So I'm going to create a new file, file, new, uh, new file, text file. OK, so it's going to be, uh, say, 10, 20, uh, 50, 40, 100, 300, 1, and 2, whatever, right? So these are my records, comma-separated values, OK? <clears throat> this is the last thing. This you didn't do. Oh, oh so let me actually, actually save it properly. I'm going to say. So this one I'm going to say coordinates, C-O-O-R-D dot comma separated value, because it's comma separated value, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to say read all lines, E-F-G, read all lines dot C. OK? So now let's read all that instead. So uh, now I want to read, instead of strings, I'm going to read an X and Y, right? So I'm going to say int x and y, set them to 0, set them to 0. <clears throat> file, I'm opening the file for reading. What was the name of the file? It was coordinate.comma separated value, reading. Now I want to do, why is it giving me an error in here? Oh, because I didn't have semicolon over here. There we go. OK, so that's that. Now, instead of a string, I want to read it into two integers, correct? So what do I do? I go percent %d, and then I have a comma and percent %d, right? You have never added anything into SCARF in format. You only read one format. But you can actually put the comma in here. You know what does that mean? It means read an integer, skip exactly this, and then read another one which means scanf will read one integer, see if it's a comma, it skips it, then reads another, which means if this is not a comma, it's going to fail. It only reads one. It, it won't read two. So you are essentially, and then you can, you can even say over here, and then skip backslash n. You can do that. So you don't have to flush. But flushing make it, make, make it, makes it more safe, so I'm just going to leave it as that. 
So in here, I'm going to say address of x and address of y equal to 2, because now I'm reading two of them, right? And then if it's successful, flush it, go to whatever after. Now in here, I'm going to say x is whatever and y is whatever. And then go to new line. Uh, let's actually put 3. And I'm going to fill this left with 0. So to fill the left with 0, I can say 0, 3. It means I want it to be in three spaces, and I want the spaces to be filled with 0. You can do that, OK? So now it's filled with 0. Now I'm here, I'm going to say x and y. So I'm going to print all those beautiful things, and I do not need to do that anymore. And I'm going to close my file. So what happens now when I read this, it's going to go through the file, read all the coordinates, and print it out. Nobody has to enter anything. And if I do it like this, I want to demonstrate something. I'm going to put over here, uh, um, what do I put? Uh, uh, an underline instead. So after 10 things that I'm reading, I'm putting an underline instead of a comma. Right? So what's going to happen? In here, let's actually put row number so we can see. So in here, I'm going to say percent %d. And let's put actually 3 over here, too. And dash x and y. And in here, I'm going to put a row. So it's going to be int row is set to 1. And I start from 1. And in here, I'm going to say show the row. And then add 1 to row. OK? So what I'm doing in here, one by one, I'm going to show the row number and I see. So when I run this program now, this is what's going to happen. Poof, it only reads 10. Not more than 10, because exactly at record 11, something's wrong. So if you're supposed to receive 500 things and you only read 10, the message you send, you find that record number 11 is corrupted. Fix it. And you send them back. Yes. No, no. Yes, but no. Let's say no. OK? The answer is no. Let's not go th <sighs> you, you, you Remember that carrot thingy that I put? That's actually regular expression. So you can do wonders with this. It's, I don't know all the things printf and scanf can do. And I'm using it for 30 years. OK? So believe me, you can. But let's, let's not go there. OK? And Believe me, you never want to give your user a choice. That's the, the end of you. Always be strict and ask them to follow instructions, as I ask you, and you don't. OK? When you follow instructions, you will not make mistake. 95% of the students coming with me with problem is that because they are not following instructions. If they did, 99% of the time, you don't have any problem, OK? And that's how you have to treat your clients. You have to tell them, hey, it has to be comma separated, ended with the backslash end, done. If it's not like that, I'm not going to read it. Fix it. For them, it's a script that creates this. They don't enter it manually. So there is something wrong with their program that they have to fix. Are we good? So that's files, done. Yes? Yes, exactly. So, so when you put zero, and you can do it with anything. So if these were floating point numbers, which I can actually read it with float, there's no problem with it. Double. I'm going to make it a double. And I'm going to make this thing percent LF. I, because an integer is a double, but a double is not an integer. OK? Person zero, I'm going to put 6.2. OK? In here, I'm going to put 6.2. And, and that's an LF2. 6.2 LF. So I'm essentially saying, put in six digits, two digits after the decimal point, fill the left with zero. OK? 
It's, and, I, and, I, and if I run it, the output's going to look like, OK. Yeah. Oh, I didn't read it properly. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't read it properly, percent LF. There you go. So now it's reading it like that. And you can always tell the compiler to do silly stuff. It will still follow you, which means if I'm nuts enough to say left justified and fill it with zero, it will do that. <laughs> but when it's left justified, there is nothing to be filled. So that zero is, doesn't mean anything, <laughs> right? So again, it follows your instructions to the bone, but it's dumb. It doesn't know that you're making a mistake. So I can say, fill the left with zero, and then left justified. <laughs> and there is nothing to be justified, nothing to be filled anymore, because it's left justified. But that's that. Are we OK? Are we OK? So I'm going to control, oh. Point 0.23, point 22, 100, 0.99, 0.3, 0.123, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0.55. Just wanted, since I did it double, I want the data to be double. And I'm going to come at 20. And on 20, I'm going to put an underline. So it only reads 20 of them. Right? That one fails. Are we OK with this? All right. Simple, straightforward. Again, I'm teaching nothing new. You know exactly how everything works, so, so act that way. Are we OK? Yes, sir. Pardon me? When you're writing, it creates a new file. Reading, it's, it will not. Yes. Yes. So <clears throat> now, to, now what you need to, what is, what is that file over here? What is the type of the file? The file is a pointer. Because I have file, pointer, my file, correct? So it's just an integer, correct? If open cannot work properly, this will be zero. Open says, hey, I, what, what, I, didn't, I couldn't do anything, so it makes it zero. So all you need to do to, to see if it was successful, you can say, if my file. Because if it's zero, it's false. It's not going to do anything, right? Then you come over here and you close it. And in here, you say, else, uh, file not found. So I'm going to say, f printf on standard error, file not found. You didn't know there's a standard error, did you? <laughs> you can actually print it on standard error, whatever. For now, it's the same thing as a screen, but it could be a different one. <laughs> OK? So now I'm saying, for, so when, when it, because when it opens it, it, cre it, it creates a structure, and it has an address somewhere, that's not going to be 0. But if it fails, so if this coordinate is cool, Coordinate, then there is no file to be open for read. So you're going to say file now found. And if the file is actually successfully open, then you open it. And for writing, 99%, it's not going to fail. Because if, it's, if it already exists, it overwrites it, deletes the old one. If it doesn't exist, it creates a new one. The only way it cannot create is that your disk or the place that you are in is write protected. <laughs> That's when it's going to fail. So you never get that. But this one is a good example to see if files are open or not. OK? So, so in here, I'm going to say uh, gh uh, reading a record dot c. And we are done. Have a beautiful day. Uh, any questions before we go? Yes. Shush. Later. OK. There are so many different ways you can open. You can open for 
writing. You can open for reading. You can open to append, which means don't override if it doesn't exist. Add at the end of the data. You can open for write and read. You can open for read and write. You can for open for append and read. There are 5,000 different ways. We just want to read and write. I just want to show you what it is. We are not teaching advanced C course in here. So anything can be done. You don't need to do it now. Just open the freaking thing and close it. Be done with it. Okay? That's the only thing we're going to do. Okay? If you want to know more, book an appointment. I'll teach you one by one the extra things you want to know, but not to everyone. Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. See you later. I am pushing this right now. Please go and fiddle around with it. Change it. Break it. Make sure you understand how it works. So in here is uh, uh, pointers, structures, arrays, and files. Commit and push. Have yourself. Oh, what happened? Permission denied. Oh, what? What the heck? Oh, 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 oh. The the PowerPoint is off. You get an announcement for it. Pointers, arrays. Okay, everything is up. <laughs>